Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about LT Spice and a couple of things you may not be aware of um, that are kind of useful if you're doing transient simulations. And they're going to involve uh, switches, how you can add a switch, like a time control switch or a voltage control switch or whatever, into LT Spice to simulate the opening or closing of a switch. And we're also going to talk about something that is very important if you're going to do that, and that is initial conditions, okay? Um, if you're familiar at all with transient analysis, electrical analysis, LT Spice has uh, some gotchas where uh, it, it makes assumptions for initial conditions that can get you into some trouble. So we're going to talk about um, switches, and uh, initial conditions and how to do a transient simulation with those. So the first thing you need to do is uh, understand that in LT Spice, a switch is generally modeled as a voltage control switch or a current control switch. All right. So if you want a time control switch, uh, it's probably best to choose a voltage control switch, which is in the built-in library, and use a voltage control switch. And uh, you'll also need to apply a voltage source to control that switch. Okay, so here I've got a very simple RC circuit, and I've got a voltage that I'm going to apply. It's a sine wave. Um, this is going to be a 60 hertz, 120 volts, AC sine wave and I'm going to apply it to this circuit. But let's say I want to switch. I want to apply a, this uh, voltage to the circuit using a switch, a time control switch. So here I've added a second circuit that we're going to use to simulate the switch. And I've got here, it's called a voltage control switch. And you can see it's got a voltage input and then the switch contacts. All right. And I've also added a voltage source to control this switch. And it is a pulse, starts with a value of zero, goes up to one in one tenth of a second. And it's got a very quick, I've, I've specified the rise time of 0 0.001 microseconds. And this is going to last for um, five seconds. So we can look at this, we can do a quick simulation and see what it looks like. So here is the pulse, it goes from zero, it's zero until 0.1 seconds and then goes up to a value of 1, all right? So that is what's going to control this switch, and that means this switch is going to turn on at 0.1 seconds. Now, where do I get this switch? Well, you need to go into um, this component and go into miscellaneous, where there's a lot of really good stuff. Go into miscellaneous, and you'll see a component labeled SW. So just drag and drop that in here, and there you've got your switch. Okay, now there's a couple more things you need to know when you're setting up this voltage control switch. Uh, first thing is on this second circuit where we're using a voltage source to control the switch, make sure you add a ground into the negative terminal or this is not going to work. The other thing you need to do, if you look down here on the bottom, I've added a model statement. Okay, so you go up here to the um, spice directive and you add a dot model statement which is dot model space sw space sw with some parentheses and you can get into specifying a bunch of things about the switch but this is just going to default to um, what we've got here so again add a ground add a model statement and we can get into some of the details on this, but just for now, we'll do this. And then you should be good to go. So here's a list of the things you need to do. We said you add an SW component from the miscellaneous folder. Add your voltage source to control the switch and set it up. Add your ground here to the voltage source. And add a dot model statement um, that looks like this. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll wire this switch into the circuit. So I'll just run a wire from here to here, and from the positive to here. And I will delete this wire, and now we've got our switch 
wired into this. So now what I can do is I can run a simulation and this switch should close applying voltage at 0.1 seconds. So let's run it and let's look at the capacitor voltage and you can see it goes, uh, wait a minute, it's at minus 180, 170 volts and yeah, it closes it 100 milliseconds, but for some reason this voltage is not zero prior to closing the switch. So the switch works, but the voltage across the capacitor starts out at minus 170. Huh. So this is part two in our discussion here about initial conditions. And the problem here is that um, LT Spice assumes initial conditions that you may not want. And the problem is the initial condition on this capacitor is not zero as you might expect and hope. So what are we going to do? Okay, so the way we fix that is I've written here the fix for that. And here's our capacitor. If you do a control right click, and I'll do that right click, control right click, go down to spice line and double click there and say IC equals zero, initial condition equals zero, okay. Then I can run it and we can see, you check the voltage and now it starts out at zero and then the, the AC voltage is applied. So now when we did ours, we used the default values. We did the dot model SW which was the name of the switch. You can see it when you, you default it. It's the name of the switch is SW. You can change that. But well, we just use the default value. And then this SW command with parentheses. And you can fill these parentheses with different values. To find out what you can fill it with, you go to the LT Spice help to the um, switch, the um, voltage control switch information. And here, is, here it is right here. So you can up, see up here we've got the dot model statement and it's dot model and the name of the switch. Again, the default is SW. You can change it to my switch or whatever you want. And then this SW command and here's all the stuff on the um, inside the command you can specify or like we did, you can just default it. So inside the SW, you've got um, the threshold voltage VT. And that's this here, VT equals zero. It defaults to zero, okay? Again, we relied on this zero default. Our value went from zero to one, and so it's greater than one. That's the threshold voltage, zero. So it's, I'm sorry, what's greater than zero it goes up to one, so that means um, that's an on, or you close the switch. Uh, VH, which is up here, hysteresis. I'm not going to get into that. You can read about it if you wanted to change its um, performance, um, like in a hysteresis loop, where one way it goes one amount and the other way it goes another amount. You can also set the on resistance. Um, so when you close it, close the switch, turn it on, you can define how much resistance it has. Normally a switch has almost zero resistance. It defaults to one ohm, and we use that default. And you can also specify the off resistance, or off, um, and that's a huge number. Uh, this G min is an internal value, 10 to the minus 12, so it's, you know, many gig ohms, so you don't have to worry about it. So um, basically, it defaults to virtually zero impedance when it's closed, and gig ohms when it's uh, open. Um, series inductance, you can specify that if you want. That's very nice. You can add an inductance. Um, here we've got a, uh, we, it defaults to zero and we use that. Uh, you can add a series voltage. Again, it defaults to zero and we use that. And you can also do a current limit. So again, you can add a lot of nice stuff in here uh, if you want. But if you do it the way we did, just a dot model, SW, SW, and nothing in here, it uses all these defaults. So anyway, I hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.